uh, unfinished project. Got to get the headlights replaced, which I already have the parts for it. Got to get the back weird lights replaced. I got to get them. No, not replaced. Got to get new batteries for it. Need new batteries. The bike needs to be cleaned. I need both tubes and tires. Uh, the gears is all fucked up. It's stuck on 3.3, but that's what usually I drive it in anyway, so. I don't think I'm going to be worried about the cable so much, especially for the fact I usually leave it on 3 on one side, and 3 is like, you know, my most intervisional speed. I may actually not have to worry about that. The handlebars will have grips on it. I already have them in my room. I'm just waiting for me to get everything else fixed, and when I'm ready to get on and ride around, that's when I'll put on the grips. Because I don't want the grips to screw up so quickly before I get a chance to get on it. I might have to readjust my seat because it, it's hurt my balls. And I used to have a second bike, actually, in which I'm going to talk about in a minute. I'm, like, really shaky. So, yeah. And I also need a new back wheel for this as well. My APU on this thing, which is under the hood, that big black thing right there, that's my battery start. That powers everything on the bike. Cool. The, well, this bike is a 2001, so there is no motor or anything. Uh, this is the one I call, this is the GCG series 500, and I like to call this one the Neo Plan because the way it sounds when you actually start getting some speed up. But, you know, I don't have to go into detail with that. I used to have another one exactly the same. And it was perfectly in good condition. And that was 0.294. Was it? No, not 0.294. Ah, 0.200 even. 0.200K. It was running perfectly fine. And my friend scrapped it because he actually wanted to order newer ones. I like old. I like older ones. They're not as complicated like newer ones. They, they want the ones with all the new motors and shit like that. I like to keep things simple. The point of a bike is to ride it, not let the motor drive you. But I do like hybrids between there and there, especially for long range when I have to run errands. That's a nice to have a motor with. But yeah, that's the work I have cut out for the bike here. Now I had another one, as you see, blank space. That's a dirt patch right there where it used to sit. And right there is a trampoline where, yeah, I scrapped that. I scrapped it. I scrapped my other bike. Well, it had disc brakes and it went off on its own. Like a small little tiny grip on the handlebar where I actually, you know, stopped. Because this red bike doesn't have that uh, disc brake, if you haven't noticed. But I had a black bike, it used to. And it used to be so great. On the handlebars, it had two high beams, one on each side, and two regular lights, one on each side, yellow grips, and just black handles and everything. Well, I accidentally crashed it. And as a result, it killed the electrical stuff, broke all my lights, except for one of the high beams, but it, even that was damaged. The rubber was coming off of it. The ceilings just all broke, and there's glass everywhere from parts of the headlight. And as a result of the crash, not only that, but you see where the forks is down there. It cracked like three, like three centimeters of where it attaches the front wheel. It cracked. Part of the front frame, it cracked. Where you have that little shift thing on the left one, and you have the Shimano shifter. So you saw one of you saw like a little button and you actually press the button and all. Well, on that bike, it actually shifted down. So you can't really shift it at all anymore. Because you have to re-screw it or replace the whole unit. And just to get the brakes alone, that's the most expensive. That's about $150. And the rest of it will come probably about $70 more. So that's probably almost Actually, it's a little bit more than half the price. It's actually good because I bought that bike for like three fifty, three hundred fifty dollars, three fifty nine to be exact. 
not including the tax. And it had over $200 worth of damage. And even more, just for the cost of the lights, which I haven't had included. So that's probably more than the bike itself. So I decided I wasn't going to spend more money in replacing those parts. The bike was going to be up for scrap, and I took off everything I could take off. The seat post was really comfortable. That was my big value. I decided I was going to take off that seat post and keep it. So then the next bike I get, I'll have a more comfortable seat to sit in. And you'll probably see that. I don't know. It depends what I decide. And, you know, this bike right here, it's a keeper. No, no problems at all with the brakes. Never fell off it after three or four years I actually had it. But when it was passed on to me, when I bought it at a local uh, pawn shop in Annapolis, she still runs in really good shape. All I have to do is just fix her up, get the back wheel, get both tubes and tires, and I'll have the gears fixed. Now, as far as electrical stuff, I just have to get the headlights working again. I get backup battery, so if my main battery goes out or something, I'll have backup battery. Because, like I said, the APU is broken, and I have to connect a cord in that box down there, and which I don't feel like doing, especially early in the morning. you got to go. And I have to run on this battery, one like normal battery, AAA battery, stuff like that, not just a huge generator, or uh, whatever they call this shit. Well, I'm basically doing what I can to keep these on the road, but it's becoming really difficult. In my next video, I'm going to sh tell you exactly why it's becoming difficult. I will tell you very, very shortly. And, yeah, that's about it. See ya.